The Incredible Hulk is one of the most famous Marvel characters of all time, but the company actually had a Hulk two years before Bruce Banner first hit the scene in 1962. This is Zemnu. He's an alien cyborg that crash landed on Earth and hypnotized the entire human race to build him a big rocket to try and return home. Since that initial appearance, Zimnu has come and gone from comics every so often, usually as a background character or in some short plots, like the time that he tried to marry She-Hulk. But in 2020, this titan made a significant reappearance in the Immortal Hulk series, and it was really freaking weird and seriously creeped me out. So when my buddy Matt Draper asked me to participate in his One Horrifying Moment collab where a bunch of talented creators make a video talking about a spooky moment in pop culture, Zimnu instantly came to mind. So let me set the stage. Bruce Banner took over Shadow Base, a government organization that was tasked with catching him in order to make weapons out of his body. With Shadow Base's resources, mostly their $1.2 billion budget, he decided to wage war on the status quo, namely disaster capitalism. How the 1% profits off of catastrophes, and because of their power and influence, they're usually the ones creating disasters in the first place. Well, Roxxon, the very definition of corrupt business, obviously didn't like that. I mean, hell, their CEO is Dario Agar, a literal evil minotaur that made a deal with the King of the Dark Elves that states that Roxxon has the mineral rights to any realms that he conquers. In order to take on the Hulk, Agar hired Zimnu under the agreement that once Roxxon is done exploiting the Earth, the alien can just have it. With Zimnu under contract, here's what happened. Roxxon unleashed several giant monsters onto the world. The Hulk and his team tried to handle them, but it got to be too much, and that's when Zemnu stepped in to save the day. But also, this is where things get weird. Zemnu talks a lot differently here than in any of his previous appearances. At first, he's not addressing anyone in particular when he speaks. He just kind of floats there in the air with these pieces of a monster in these telekinetic bubbles, all while prattling on about childhood, about how life was easier before jobs and families, watching Saturday morning cartoons and unwrapping a new toy. Now, Zemnu and the Hulk have history, and the big guy wastes no time attacking his former enemy. But the fuzzy dude doesn't even attempt to put up a fight. He just spouts a monotone, oh me, oh my. When the news cameras are finally able to capture the fight, Zimnu just keeps on talking about childhood, Ewoks, the flavor of bubblegum, middle school crushes, and summer evenings. The Hulk is literally tearing him limb from limb, and Zimnu is just calmly taking it. Eventually, the Hulk's allies pull him out of the fight, because to the rest of the world, it looks like he was beating up on a hero that was just trying to help. Because you see, this entire time, Zimnu was brainwashing the populace through the cameras. These days, we all carry cell phones, and are constantly plugged into the internet, which is perfect for Zemnu to attack and nest inside of our brains. He implanted false memories of being the world's greatest hero. Bruce Banner was never the Incredible Hulk. Zemnu was. He was also the one entertaining the masses with his fantastic wall-crawling abilities, not Spider-Man. He was the leader of the Avengers and the X-Men, and because he lives inside of your brain, that's just the way it's always been. He is heroism incarnate. But of course, what is a hero without a villain? While broadcasting his signal, Zimnu made the world believe that Bruce Banner was the world's greatest enemy, a terrorist who was trying to use his massive intellect to destroy the world. As Zimnu fed off the life force of the human race through his artificial nostalgia, he was also able to literally change people's entire perceptions and personalities. Even Banner was affected by this, as he spontaneously transitioned into that maniacal villain that the world now saw him as due to Zimnu's hypnotic manipulation. After all, what are we if not a collection of memories? But of course, this life force wasn't enough to keep Zemnu satisfied, so he also consumed a few humans in a truly gruesome fashion, converting what was left of their bodies into disgusting, shambling, mouthless drones that resembled his own form. The alien had his claws in everyone. Even Dario Agar, who thought that he was protected from Zemnu's influence, was eventually consumed by him, reducing this menacing villain to a twisted pile of flesh and blood. The only thing able to resist Zemnu's hypnotic influence was Banner's Hulk personality, especially when his green scar persona rose to the surface and ripped Zemnu a new one, ending both his life and reign of terror. I know I'm in the minority, but I really, really don't like horror and other creepy shit. I mean, hell, the only reason that I'm doing this collaboration in the first place is because my friend nicely asked me to participate in it, and I have a hard time saying no to the people that I care about. But this character does legitimately weird me the hell out, and despite all the 
gross body stuff that the Immortal Hulk series has going for it, it's Zimnu that got under my skin the most. His appearance isn't that much more threatening than a teddy bear, but it's something about the way that he talks and carries himself that just gives me the jibblies. Since the news cameras don't appear until a later scene, it really does feel like that when Zimnu first shows up, it's you, the reader, that he's talking to. When you read his words written on the page, you hear his voice inside of your head, which is a direct access point into your mind. And yeah, I've been dealing with a lot of creative burnout, and living through a global pandemic does have me nostalgic for when I was a kid, back when I spent all of my time ignoring homework, building bionicles, and playing Neopets. I really don't appreciate this fuzzy dude looking at me with those red eyes, trying to weaponize that feeling of longing for a bygone era. I appreciate the novelty that Zimnu's return appearance brought, but I feel like that if he was around for any longer, then he would have overstayed his welcome. I think we had just the right amount of this character to give that sense of unease, and to me at least, that's one horrifying moment. But anyway, that's all I have for today, and if you liked this, well, good news, One Horrifying Moment has a playlist, so go check that out and take a look at some of the other amazing creators making content in this big collaboration. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.